All right, live from Space Coast Podcast Studios in Melbourne, Florida, it is the Melbourne Mayor Podcast. No longer on Wednesdays or Mondays, but now on Thursdays. On Thursdays, and Jesse. I, and I think we're good on Thursdays. Uh, no, Thursdays better because I have meetings, you know, normally the council meetings on Tuesday night and then airport authority board on Wednesday, Monday night, so the affordable housing committee. So Thursday is the best night. Plus it's one day before what day? Friday. That's right. I know. So so when when this bores you and, and you just get tired of it and you can at least <laughs> know that tomorrow's Friday, that'll make you happy. There you go. Right? <laughs> you got a point there. Thank you. You know, uh, awesome. So how are you doing, Jesse? Oh, getting along, brother. Getting uh, along. It's been, it's been a busy month. I know. It's, it's been, been crazy. crazy. Yeah. Man, it's crazy. So much going on. I had yeah. some meetings today. Um, we have a big project looking that uh, we're going to try to pull the trigger on downtown Melbourne. It's a real nice uh, apartment complex right there on the water. Uh, beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Probably a, a really? hundred hundred million dollar project. Wow. I haven't I haven't unveiled it yet, um, but it were. Um, we're not far from unveiling it in the next couple of weeks and i'm just very glad i'm parking garage and get another at least 100 parking spaces it's right there off uh melbourne avenue by the uh, bright line uh, the bridge that goes over right there oh okay. melbourne avenue and, and melbourne court uh the old SunTrust building i remember uh, that's been that's been abandoned for a long time and you sure know we is. have somebody that's going to come in and put a nice apartment i mean amenities it, it's honestly it's it's just it's something that that you would see it you know that somewhere you go if delray beats some it's it beautiful so we're looking that in and, and looking that hopefully they'll close on 90 days and get started so wow. what's going to be uh, what's going to be interesting is you know we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the margaritaville what's going on there and some other things but what's interesting there is um you know if we see a downturn in the you know economic conditions or the economy that we'll have a, a handful of great projects going on that have maintain jobs and and keep you know you know the economy stimulated mm-hmm. i mean hopefully i mean i'm sure look we all know it's probably going to happen but hopefully here in, in you know bavard maybe melbourne we won't see it as hard because you know a lot of people depend on you know you know those jobs and, and to support their families so that's really important to me 100 percent and to keep the Melbourne area thriving. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and when you have a distressed property that's been abandoned. Yeah. You know, that's it's it's a it's a blight. Yeah. And it, you know, it doesn't help anybody. Hey, so. you know, I had the Palm Bay Chamber, uh we had that mayor's roast. I don't know if yes. you Yeah, that was great. You were you, you weren't there. I, it was I, sold out. I did not miss I, I missed it this year. But I had some great jokes. I had some I had some yeah. good jokes. Some I almost got thrown out of there. No. It was awesome, yeah. Who, who's gonna bounce well, Nancy, Wayne? No, well no, I got <laughs> Wayne good. I told I told you know, I I, t- I told the sheriff and said, you know, we're we're known in Bavard for the best sheriff in the right. country. And then I, I paused at the end, I said, We sure miss Jack Parker. Oh no! <laughs> oh yeah, it was great. It's like there you go, Wayne. How you like that one? Oh, he was getting me good though. But but I I, I come out with the one and and I said, look, we're we're number one in the nation. Yeah. U.S. News and World Report number one. I said they factored in West Melbourne and we dropped to fifteen. And I, I looked at Hal Rose. I said, just like you, we made the short list. No. <laughs> oh, that's great. You know, look if you you good. know it was good. Hey, he's you know Hal Hal's great he's over there. Sport. You know he's oh he's an out, amazing sport. It, it was funny. I, I thought it was. We <laughs> had some great jokes. It was, it was, we had some great jokes, but uh, uh, no, that we they put a good event uh, uh, every year. The Palm Bay Chamber up in yeah. Coco. It sells out, and it's really breakfast with the mayors at the updates from the cities. And look, they only give you five minutes. And I, you know, I got so much going on in Melbourne. If I'm going to get five minutes, I'm really going to make my time, and I'm I'm just going to roast the other mayors. I mean, right. why not? You know, <laughs> people are coming there and they're you know eating breakfast. Right. You know, they they want to hear about our updates. They can come on our on our podcast and, and hear about the Melbourne updates, exactly right? Right. Right. No, right. I'm going to get my time. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to eat my bacon and and I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to I'm going to fry them like the bacon. You know, great great time. It's a good roast. Yeah, yeah. great time. Oh, I'm, I see my daughter's watching Megan Alfrey. I, I see she's watching. Well, interesting. Yay. She must be. She but she. Oh, hey, she says, hey, dad. Shouldn't you be cleaning your room? Oh, no, that's Madison. I'm sorry, Meg. Sorry about that. Well, it shouldn't do that to you, hon. But no, um, everything else was going good um, in Melbourne. Um, uh, see what she's going to say. Hey, if, Dad. Yeah, can we block her if we have to? <laughs> if we really have if to. If we really but, have yeah. to, we'll block, we'll block Megan. I like that. Oh, it's clean. She said it's clean. I bet it is, okay? But anyway, um, everything is going really well. We'll kind of get into the Margaritaville stuff here shortly uh, and take some questions. I'm trying to, trying to fill in a lot of, we got a lot of stuff going on. But uh, airport, 
um, being on the Melbourne uh, Orlando, and I'm going to just refer to Melbourne International Airport. That's what it is. And that's what it is. You know, we we got that big uh, 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 that big plane landing. And, and yeah. That, yeah, look at that thing. It's landing again. I mean, it, we had uh, the airport was saying it had over a hundred thousand uh, views when it landed uh, when a week, couple weeks ago, but it's landing again tonight. Uh, it may have already just landed uh, around five something. That's when it's scheduled. But that's one of the largest planes in the world. Isn't that pretty impressive? And, it, and is it getting maintenance? What, what's the business of? Yeah, it? it's kind of maintenance stuff. I don't know exactly. Um, you I know, mean, that, it's not bringing in cargo because that that thing could, you know haul a plane in, in itself yeah that that i think it's like the second largest in the world but seeing that thing come in and most people don't know how big we have one of the largest runways in the world at, at melbourne that's right yeah a lot of people don't know that so it, it's pretty cool but to, to see that big thing and it, it's uh it's massive it, it's massive i think it's pretty neat but yeah put the stats on i think it's impressive the other day at the airport uh, in, the, in our meeting we were discussing uh the stats on the airport mm-hmm. But the other day, you know, there was some, I think it was Destination Bavard. I think Ryan, I think he put it out that it yeah. was all the TUI planes that were out there. We had like five planes. But May 7th, I believe, was the busiest day ever for passengers for our airport. One day, I mean, that was the busiest day ever, and we believe on record. But if you look at that, just in one day, nearly 3,000 TUI passengers landed. Wow. So, yeah, isn't that crazy? Uh, sir, um, you have... Um, 1,779 domestic passengers, uh, so a total of 4,774 passengers in one day, uh, 27,000 pounds of cargo, um, five uh, TUI 787s processed. That's pretty cool to see them all, like, landed at the same That's time. That's a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then that is the, busy. Then we had other three 787s and two 787 eight, uh, 30 buses. And 62,000 gallons of fuel for TUI. Isn't that crazy? That's amazing. That That's pretty amazing. That's one day at our airport. And, you know, those people are coming and spending money. They're, and that they're staying, you know, here. They're going over to Orlando, uh, O-Town. And, and uh, it's pretty neat to see that uh, them come in. And, you know, they uh, it, it, it's going to be coming our busy season. So that that's really cool to see that happening, you know, with the seventy-one million dollar or seventy-two million dollar expansion that's done. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully, now we get a good air show coming in. I know we couldn't do any during during the ex, you know the expansion, but we had fun last time, Jesse. We had a great time. And we'll have another fun time again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna the, have... the, air, the airport needs to do some fun things because, unlike you know Cocoa Beach, which is a good production. Yeah. But when you have the flight path right over the river and all yeah. the boats are yeah. out there on the river, I mean, yeah. it's, it's a really incredible sight. Yeah. yeah, and, you know, Cocoa Beach, I was with uh, their mayor, Ben Malik, here this last yeah. week. And you know, I got up Sunday morning. I was there at 630 for beach cleanup. And, and That's very yeah, I got thoughtful of yeah. yeah, well, yeah, I mean, and I was up there with uh, Cocoa Beach uh, Mayor Ben Malik. He, you know, we, we were up there with the uh, the— the Indian, uh, they 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 had a they actually had their delegate from Atlanta come down. They had they had so many people. I, w- I put it on my social media page, but they had like several hundred people show up for beach cleaning. And what's pretty neat is they had probably oh man, forty or fifty young kids, and to see them get out of bed, uh, you know, Sunday morning to go clean our beaches. And it was funny because Ben was like, oh, and we're gonna have a boat boat show or a you know, <laughs> boat race, and we're gonna have this. And I'm like, man, it was too much fun up here, <laughs> no you kidding. know. Well, they they are the the tourist attraction yeah. of, of you know the Space Coast. Yeah, yeah, they they are. They they do they do great up there. So I have a lot of fun up there. So yeah, we I was up there for that for this last Sunday. But uh, yeah, the de- the uh, uh, yeah the airport everything's going great. I mean, we are looking at uh, probably I think I got to look at my calendar in a couple of weeks. The hotels opening up there as well. That Hyatt, yep. Yeah. That that that, that thing's going to open up and it's a fly-in hotel. So not only will it serve people, you know, from from just checking in but people mm-hmm. can fly from their from their plane and check in right there it's yeah neat. it's neat and and is is there a way to uh get customs or people could just fly in not even see customs well stay? i think the customs i think they pre clear stuff i don't know exactly right. the details right um you know i because I, I think that's with fly most other fly-ins it's you know if you come in on a private jet and you stay on the property yeah if you don't leave the property you re- you really don't have to yeah you know go like through that. immigration and, right. and other other procedures so yeah, it's, it makes it's pretty yeah. exciting yeah it's pretty yeah. cool it's pretty cool so that that's going to be pretty fun so that's what we're looking at too um 
Yeah, well, real quick, and we'll, we'll kind of touch on the Margaritaville. As you know, um, mm-hmm. I did a post out there. I know the, the local paper did a did an article about the Margaritaville, um, and there was a lot of rumors out there. Uh, I, at first, what had happened, I kind of knew that this was going to happen for a couple months. There, That develop, developer for Margaritaville, he's local. Mm-hmm. So unlike, you know, a standard Margaritaville where you'll have an outside entity come into town and right. build this, um, he had bought the property back in like 2018 or so and 17, I think, and he bought it directly from the city. Um, and uh, he wanted to put something good there. He invested a lot of time. He cleared like 23, 24, 25 easements, uh, a lot of a lot of land, a lot of the stuff state uh, and federal with the waterway and then of course he attracted margaritaville and got it in there um there initially when it came before us i remember it was like a 65 million dollar project and then i heard 70 million then i heard 75 million then i heard 80 million then i heard 90 million and i think the last time i heard it was like 100 million so Yikes. it's just with the inflation and and you know the interest rates and and that you know the labor um materials just in the last three or four years anybody that's gone and bought something that they bought three or four years ago go man i can't believe it went up so much so um kind of kind of knew this was going to happen there's a lot of rumors that oh it's 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 kind it's gone that, that's not accurate um, right. a lot of people don't know he's also doing a uh, a project there on O'Galley next to the azan temple there's houses going in there if you look um, yes. it, it, there's 25 townhouses and um, I think it's nine or ten houses on the water and then in front it's going to have a commercial developer development right there um, next to Galley High School um, so he's doing that project at the same time and to my understanding he had expected to already have some of that built they haven't poured concrete yet so you know he's got it fenced off um it came before council this last tuesday night for final plat approvals and stuff so Mm. he he's still on it but uh with he had to take a pause for a little bit for the margarita bill now they're still working on stuff at the at the below marina i mean it's kind of it's a bummer that that's happening but it it, it, once the interest rates drop and once you know the loan to value some of that stuff changes Mm -hmm. um he's going to crank back up you know he has he's already got out of his own pocket I think four and a half million dollars out of his own pocket on that site. Uh, so you know, I think what and I and look, I, maybe I shouldn't say it here, but I think what's happening is he gets something done. You get a draw for three million that you had planned two years ago, but it's costing you five and a half million. Right. So you know, he's got to get so much done, go back to the banks, and and you know, uh, it's not the time to borrow money. No, it, it's not the time to borrow money right now. And so you know, that's unfortunately taking a pause and. You know, I, I think it'll be fired back up here soon. But, it, you know, it is what it is. It, it's, you know, we just got to hopefully, you know. Well, when you're sourcing and pricing and getting all the materials and getting all the estimates for the cost in 19, mm. and then you have a pandemic in 20, and everything shuts down from 20 to 21, by the time you revamp, mm. whatever you thought was going to happen in 19, well, you know, it just it went through a whole big yeah you know uh, and and you nobody can plan that nobody can ex- you know really expect that and, and, and you know include that in a budget well let's just include just in case plus or minus 30 percent either way right like exactly. nobody really does that yeah exactly so so uh but but that that's the that was the issue with the margaritaville there was a lot of rumors um i got a call from florida today and they were asking me hey do you know anything about this and of course i'd talked to to harry you know the the, mm. the, the developer and and uh you know the owner and, and we kind of knew that was going to happen here in the, the last few months i mean it was just like to the point where you know we've got to try to <laughs> refinance stuff and cause yeah. it's gonna it's gonna work well i think once you get it built and you know you get an operational it's gonna work i mean uh, you know it's just we'll see we'll yeah. see how that goes but it, it they're expecting it to com- be completed at the tw- in 2025 as opposed to uh, the next year yeah, and he's not the only developer that's probably seeing those woes either. Yeah. Oh you know, no, they're, I mean, they all are. Yeah, everybody's yeah. experiencing something like this. So. Yeah, we're seeing we're seeing a lot, even the developers, uh, which was very interesting. The one I talked about earlier, the hundred million dollar one, they have their own money, their own financing, so it's kind of ready to go. But a lot of them that are, are relying on banks and stuff, they're mm-hmm. they're all taking a pause and they're seeing, you know, hopefully, you know, the windows prices and the the metal prices and the concrete prices will drop. So we'll see. Yeah, you know, and at a time when you know banks are failing right now, you know, I think most of them are probably be a little bit more, you know, clutching their 
they're purse strings. You know, yeah. they're not really the pearls. You know, the pearls, yeah, yeah they're, the pearls. They're, they're they're white knuckling and, and they're thinking, <laughs> uh, we don't, uh, we're not in a position to to, to loan anybody right now. So. Right, exactly. Yeah. So so that was uh, that that's a little bit on the Margaritaville. Yeah, the next thing is I had something on the agenda this last week. I discussed the uh, conditional use of the daily bread, and that that actually. Uh, you know that that brought a little bit of controversy, but anytime you talk about that, about the daily bread or anything, mm-hmm. that bring con- that brings controversy. But I did that for for several reasons, and and I just felt that you know that you know I'm going to maintain the oil, you know a cleanliness of the city, and and really it was kind of my opinion out of control out there. Not you know daily bread's a great organization. That's one thing I, I said. Let's not take away from what they do and and the meals they serve, but. But they've evolved to a, a position where, you know, more case-based management. And so they made some changes because really, and I call it like I see it, it looked like Skid Row. I mean, you go out there and people land on the sidewalks, you can't use the parks. And, you know, 30% of our police and fire, you know, our calls are quality of life issues. And it's, a, you know, t- it's a taxing on the, our public safety employees so it's something that that you know i called for a discussion of the conditional use because every so often you know we look at that and and really um i hadn't done that since Mm -hmm. i was mayor and i thought it was important we had some people a lot of people complaining the homeowners and really i'm going to fight for the residents because you know you buy a home and you live in a neighborhood you know you expect you know to feel safe with you you know you expect that you can let your kids go outside <clears throat> that's one of the reasons I've cracked down hard on these in these zombie houses, you know. Right. You know, the last thing I want to hear is, is someone say, hey, you know, I, I can't let my kids go outside because, you know, you got to foreclose your house and people are out there, you know, they're just, they're just, they're, you know, they're just terrorizing the neighborhood. Mm. So I put that uh, on the agenda and discussed it. And it's interesting because Daily Bread has, has you know, it's something I, you know, kind of work on this last couple of weeks they've i think they've come out with a great plan that's going to focus on people that want help uh, they made a couple comments i thought really were key that you know a lot of some of the people that go there thanked them for this because they're like look you know we want help and and now you have the ability to spend your time on me and someone who you know and, and it's really important so um it's really in my opinion they're they're going through some phases it's a good neighbor action plan and if you'll put that up i kind of will kind of go through what they're doing now and really i went by a little bit ago and took some pictures and honestly it looked great i mean and we want to keep it that way but this went in effect on may 3rd uh this is something that they started night nightly outreach and zoning enforcement Mm -hmm. establishing schedules and nightly street outreach process conduct de-escalation training in camp uh, enforcement of the code of conduct on campus with a zero tolerance mindset that's very important the fact is you know we don't really ever hear complaints from the CETA mission why because if you go there and act like a fool they're going to kick out right uh, they don't put up with that you're going to work to get a job you're going you're going to you know you're going to basically attend you know you know their scheduling uh, and then, of course, a, com- a compassionate firmness training. And that started phase one, uh, which is effective May 3rd. The next one, phase two, just started the other night. And I actually i am starting to see really great results from them. And they're managed access to campus to change focus on, on long-term services versus a daily drop-in schedule resulting in a more peaceful purpose purposeful environment so what that means instead of hey we're just going to feed you and you just go Mm. uh, you know you're going to go through their their program Um, the next one is all clients will undergo registration and reassessment so you're going to register you know you're going to be assessed what you need uh, and it's really going to be a more of a a, you know um, for the people that will benefit from the services instead of honestly people just going there and they're troublemakers mm. and and you know they they uh before you know and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna go negative here right. in my opinion daily bread served you whether you're you're disorderly or not and really that put a you know that brought a a mentality that hey we can go there and hang out i mean right down the road it's not happening at CETA. why is it happening at right. daily bread so uh, it's right there. Only those clients re- requiring long-term services and able to benefit from daily bread services will be admitted. Uh, so I think um, that's key. Now, that's only the beginning. That's not. That is not the. You know, we're not done. 
but that that's going to be enforced and it, like um, we were getting called we got pictures I'm not going to put them all up there's so many that you know mm-hmm. you know just garbage everywhere and stuff but these are the pictures from today kind of if you'll show these pictures from today um, what when I drove by there kind of gave you an idea of the, yeah. the neighborhood if, if you pull these up yeah there's one again much cleaner streets now look at the streets I mean next one next I mean clean mm-hmm. everything clean they everything clean I mean no tarps no tents none of that right I mean, honestly, it looks like a regular street block, you know? Yeah. And the residents in that area deserve that. I mean, the people complain, hey, we have Wells Park. They can't even use the park. Right. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm putting an end to that. I mean, the fact is, is, you know, I should better let my child out to go play in the park and not worry that they're going to step on a needle. I think that's not going to happen. Right. You know, look, you know, we're, there's some cities that, that turn a blind eye. I'm not going to turn a blind eye to that, you know? You know, we, we recently, um, you know, we cleaned up a bunch of camps. We've been, you know, we're working on actually some of the houses too, the zombie houses. If you look at some of the ones we had on Juniper, Sherwood, uh, Sherwood Boulevard, uh, Garfield, that's been cleaned up. A handful of them, we've been getting those cleaned up. And and what we've actually done is, and I know I've talked about it before, is suit we, you know, force them suing the banks to force them into foreclosure. Well, when they're in foreclosure, mm-hmm. to get them in private hands. Because, you know, people will flip them and, and turn them into something to, and, and uh, get a good family in them. So right. people appreciate that. You know, when when I heard that, when I became mayor, I heard that we had foreclosures that were sitting there since like 06, 07. I'm like, how in the hell do you do a foreclosure for like 15 years? Yeah. I mean, if I didn't pay my mortgage for five months, I'm out of there. Oh, yeah. Evic- you too, Jesse. You're, yeah, you're out of there. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Can you imagine? Hell, buy a house, don't even pay it. You know, they'll never, you know, it's like, no, 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 no. And then, of course, what does that do? It, mm-hmm. it just the the neighbor. It's a broken broken window theory in law enforcement. If you let a window broken window set, it's only gonna you know get worse. Yeah, so. and pe- people want their property values to go up, not not stay stagnant or right. even depreciate because you know of a couple delinquent homes. Yeah. So so we 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 started doing that. Um, that's something that we're working on. Um, you know, I've had a lot of people reach out to me, and and I'm gonna really um, you know. Uh, we're gonna uh, bill miller i i'm gonna engage bill miller let me tell you about bill miller you know bill miller me and him go at it and i respect i I respect the hell out of bill um bill i know you were a little bit late to the meeting because he got kind of got mad at me and i i understand i respect that what had happened is he came in about eight eight something i put it on the agenda and it was on the last of the agenda and, and we had a former elected officials say that we were vote, making a vote that we weren't. Mm-hmm. And so we had quite a few senior citizens show up. And, and you know, I didn't want, to, want them to sit for a couple hours through engineering stuff because you don't want to go. You want to go speak in your government and you get three minutes and you got to wait three hours. I'm just right. I don't I don't I don't think that was right. So I was, and I told everybody at the beginning, look, I'm going to pull this up, give everybody plenty of time to speak. I'll give you more than three minutes. I mean, I made a purpose. You're if you're going to come here and take your evening out to speak. I'm not cutting you off at three minutes. You know, we're gonna we're gonna get this worked out together. And Bill, Bill, you're the one to even come up in front of council a couple of weeks ago and said they were not living up to their conditional use. And you know what? I and I, I heard you, Bill, and I and again, me and you can argue all day long, but I heard you and I said I'm gonna put it on the agenda. So you missed it and I said it because you were late. And you woke up, <laughs> you come in, look, it's all all in fun, Bill. You came in and 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 uh uh, I had said it before. Look, we had Mr. Miller come up and and he spoke. And you know what? He had a, a legitimate gripe, so I put it on the agenda. So you, you know that was one of the big reasons. Him and a couple of the business owners down in downtown Melbourne. So Bill, I heard what you said, uh, and and uh, there's some of the pictures from tonight. And I'm gonna I'm gonna keep an eye, and I know you will too. So me and you can butt heads all day long, and I know you and I will both work together to get what's done right in that area. So I appreciate what you're doing, Bill, and just honestly keep coming at me because you're keeping me on my toes. I appreciate it. That's oh, how, I yeah, like that. That's how you deal with someone that you, you want to go out with. You know, yeah. keep it up. You know, as long as I'm in government, keep me in check. I'm okay with that. You know, so, uh, and you know what? If you come and speak, Bill, I'll give you more than three minutes. How's that? Is that, that a deal? I'll do that. I'll do that for Bill. 
Yeah. So and All Bill's right. been rough on me. Bill, Bill's, Bill's been rough at giving you hell. Yeah, that's okay. I met Bill. You know he, and you know what? It rightfully so because he's lived in an area where he's, you know, he had to put up with this crap, and it's not right, not for right for him or any other homeowner. So I respect right. that. So you're the real, you're one you're one of the main reasons I did that, Bill. So look at the pictures and and that's you, man. So. But that, that's what's going on there uh, out there. And, again, Daily Bread's a great organization, and but they need to realize that they got to focus on managed care. And they're good at that. They're mm-hmm. very good, you know, uh, on the, you know, the housing, the housing issue that we have in Brevard. Um, it, um, I want to give out a, a shout-out to somebody else out there, John Thomas from the Home Builders Contractors Association. Uh, they had come about um, – some uh, affordable and, and, and workforce housing, and they made some recommendations uh, the other night, uh, him and Bruce Moya, about, you know, I guess in city code it, for, like, affordable housing, if it's a two-bedroom, you get you got, you must have a uh, two parking spots. It's like most people, affordable housing, hmm. they don't need two parking spots. They don't. So we got to dial that down, and that's coming back in an ordinance. And what that does, it allows people to build that, because if you're coming in to, buy, to build, let's say, 200 units why would you have to put 400 parking spots imagine like that you got an empty parking lot right so you know that's something that you know they came out with a great solution and 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 uh we were enacting that i appreciate my council for you know backing me on that too because mm-hmm. i couldn't do it without a supportive council uh, either so yeah the hbca are a great group of people i was yeah. proud i was a proud member for for a little bit so um, yeah, great leadership, really good membership, and they do a lot of outreach. Yeah, and actually, John Thomas, he he just announced, uh, he's actually getting ready to announce that he's going to run for school board. There's going to be an open seat uh, in the school board. He's getting ready to announce for that, and I think, honestly, he'd, he'd, he'd be a great a- asset mm-hmm. on that school board. And one of the reasons is I, I'm a firm believer that our, our kids in school have to get back and learn trades. Uh, I believe they got to learn, you know, they got to learn how to, you know, balance their checkbooks. Um, they need to learn about financing, you know, how to how to save and to buy a house. You know, I, I, I think that's very important. And if we can do that, John very big into that, you know, leading the HBCA. Um, but he does, you know, having somebody like that, you know, that that's huge. I mean, and that's huge. And, and, and more than that, more than just financial literacy, you know, I remember home ec. Yeah. Learn how to, you know, make a breakfast. And, how come and, you and, never and, made me breakfast? <laughs> huh? I, I would love to scramble some eggs for you, I bet Mayor. you would. <laughs> I bet you would. Uh, I bet you would. I'll grill some ham. We'll yeah, have a There you go. You know, uh, you would have egged my so, house if eggs weren't so expensive. <laughs> no kidding. You know? If it wasn't $6 a dozen. <laughs> no kidding. You go, through, you go to egg my house, I'll be out there catching them. Hey, you know, you can't even toilet paper a, a, a tree no more because it's so expensive. I know. You know? I know. It's crazy. You know, people go out there and, you know. <laughs> that, that didn't work but yeah that no. that's what we got going on so that was that was good with the the daily bread and, and what's going there and, and really i um you know I, we're going to get this right um we're going to continue to improve and clean our city i'm uh, looking forward to that i know i know a lot of people are are wanting that and and uh you know we're we'll, we'll see how it goes yeah well I, again i think with with your leadership and you know the right uh people who who support the city um because we have a lot of organizations that are standing by ready great to great organization yeah. great organization yeah we have one now the CETA is putting a a place up there on aurora uh it's right there john julia it's julia it's aurora road it's stewart and there's they just broke ground mm-hmm. and, and they're putting a a shelter there for women and children for like domestic violence and stuff really nice i met with them and and went over the plans and mm-hmm. i'm going to assist them on the side you know not with the city, but as a contractor, I want to assist them and help them out with that. And it, it's going to be a place where they can go and, you know, and, and help them get jobs and help them watch their kids while they go to work. And it's going to be like three, I think three buildings and really nice and got to do laundry on site. It's going to be really. That's important. Very. And it looks like office buildings and what they're putting up. It's mm-hmm. very professional. Uh, they've already raised all the money. I think it's $1.8 million. They raise so wow. yeah it's going it's going good so it's going real real good um so and then there's gerald paratus hey gerald hey buddy how you doing uh gerald is gerald uh, i'm gonna give a shout out to gerald there um he uh um he, when we were doing a lot of the 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 changes for the affordable i'm on the affordable housing committee we were doing a lot of the changing he's really in a zoning and engineering kind of expert um 
He's very good, very caring. He's really good. So he was in my ear a lot. And it's somebody I can say, hey, man, what what is this? And, you know, I don't have all the answers. Mm-hmm. But the keto good leader is you surround yourself with people that 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 know and then you got to listen. You know, I noticed that a lot of people like the officials, they don't listen. They, they don't listen. They, you know, they know it all and they got a plan and they're afraid to say my plan was wrong mm. or back off that plan. And because and, uh, they know that it would be used against them in the next election. Well, he said this, but he did this. Mm. I mean, look, I, I'm not a I'm not a, a lifetime politician, never was, never will be. And you got to be able to say, look, I, that didn't work. We got to try it this way or his idea is better than mine. And if you if we did that in this country, we'd be in a lot better, better yeah, no opposition. Kidding. Instead of just nobody backs down. Nobody nobody takes a, a, you know you know everybody everybody wants to gain and gain and gain and, and not compromise. Yeah. And, and we're seeing that with the budget. We're seeing that at the federal level, and you know, and it's and it hurts everybody involved. Yeah. And and it's something that if you did that, um, and you know, I tell you, it's, I, I it, if you look at our the Melbourne Dias, you know, if you were to hit the nonpartisan position, but we mm. have five Republican and two Democrat, and normally I have a seven no vote because you know I, I lay out I'll lay it out and I'll mm. say this is why we're doing this and I mean honestly I'll challenge my council members you got a better idea bring it up I mean yeah. I'll listen and put mine up against yours and 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 you know that that think that's fair and and normally they you know if they do we'll, we'll go with it well you have a, a pro- proper debate you yeah. look at both sides you know you weigh it out pros and cons I mean we, we used to play these games all the time you know, but we again we forgot because you know ego gets in the way and and everything else. You know, I mean it's it's you know we need to we need to compromise and we need to have a, a good discourse again. Yeah, and I see Nick Babcock. He he's he's highly skeptical that works out, but if it does, I'll applaud. Well, I will tell you this: um, they've laid out their security plans. Uh, they met with the city. Uh, they're no longer a walk-in. You can't just walk in and go get food and hang outside the gate. You can't do that no more. So. Um, I, I'm not skeptical. Um, I, I'm holding everybody accountable. Uh, and, and, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's look, it's only been a couple days yet. But look at the pictures that I put up. Mm. Man, it looks, you know, already changed. We just we got to be responsible and stay on it, make sure it's done. And I believe they'll do it. Mm. You know, they the Daily Bread has a vested interest in, in the city and, you know, in, in their their their. Uh, organization and and you know what they've been a great partner with the city i will say this about daily bread you know when we had the uh, cold weather shelter we needed it Uh, i i relied on daily bread i called Mm. i called uh uh you know i called jeff and i said hey you know we you know it's going to be 30 32 degrees and you know 33 degrees and you know and and we have no shelter and i worked with him and and uh um pastor tooley over at the First Church of the Nazarene on Babcock. They we had our meetings there. They opened up a little bit, and then we mm-hmm. actually, my council was generous. Seven O, we voted and we opened up uh, um, our, our community center because our community center should be for everybody. And right. and we had the extra room, and we had the we it was orderly. People brought in animals. They had their dogs in. They put them in. You know, they were with them mm-hmm. cages, and in the morning they were gone, and everything was fine. So, you know, we got to do that. You know. And, and it worked out really good. So, you know, kudos to Pastor Tully and his staff over at First Church of the Nazarene, you know. And that's just one of many of our the organizations that, that are, we partner with. So so um, what else we got on? Well, what else we got on the agenda? Uh, well, you have a fundraiser coming up. Oh, I got a great fundraiser. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This, this is, this is going to be for life recapture. It's next Thursday night. Yeah. It's next Thursday. Are you going to be there? I'm going to try to make it. You better. You can't outshoot me. Well, I haven't shot in a while. Uh, you're right. Uh, am- am- ammo is pretty you're, expensive. Yeah, ammo. Nine millimeter isn't uh, you know twenty five cents no more. It's like fifty cents around, and uh, even even for a full metal jacket. You know what? I'll you buy. Know? I'm gonna buy your ammo. You're gonna buy my. Ammo? I can I can show you how to shoot. <laughs> you got it. Yeah. So it's funny because yeah, it, we're gonna have that. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be all the money's gonna go to life recaptured. We have some great sponsors uh, that that's helping out with this. Uh, Wasi's Meat Market. They're gonna be giving out a. Uh, uh, raffling off a, a green egg, uh, D yes. Bell, D Bell General Contracting, Dave Bell and Jaden, that they're they're awesome. They always uh, uh, they're they're always given to the community. Actually, they were the volunteer cr- uh, contractors on our on our uh, Pylock dog parks. So yes. you know they did all that, and that was great. And so you know, we what other sponsors we got up there? Well, yeah, we have D Bell. Uh, we have uh, American 
building and contractors will code the fence, mm-hmm. the revolver sponsor, yeah. and uh, the media sponsor is Destination Brevard, Ryan. Yeah, Ryan, yeah. yeah, Destination Brevard, yeah, you're a great group. You know, I will say um, his, his stuff works. Uh, his stuff definitely works. Yesterday he had put out a, uh, a, a thing on uh, seafood, Melbourne Seafood Station. Yes. You ever been there? Yes. I've never been there. Really? Never they been have, there. They have two locations. No, they don't. They have what? They got four. They have four now? They got four. Oh, well, I've been to the one right here on US 1. Yes. You know, across from the mansion. Mm-hmm. That's and, one. And I've been to the one on O'Galley. That's two. Right. I went to the one at West Melbourne. Oh. They, they have the one in West Melbourne. At, um, I don't even know. Yeah, it's in West Melbourne, kind of Palm Bay-ish, West mm-hmm. Melbourne. Uh, it's right there um, off Palm Bay Road. And then I got to look where the other four, but there was four because there was four to choose from. No way. So I'd never been there. And you did all you could eat. Well, no, my daughter did. Oh, yeah. Maddie. <laughs> and, and how did yeah. she do? Well, I think they shut Melbourne Seafood Station down. No, but no, no, she did. <laughs> I, I, she I killed it. I, I didn't know they did that. I didn't know they did that. And, mm-hmm. you know, my daughter, do- my, my 17-year-old daughter loves crab legs, and she she we went to red lobster and and she's like dad can i get crab legs sure she got a bunch and the bill was like so expensive i was like broke and <laughs> so I, I saw it pop up and on destination Brevard, i saw it pop up i was like i've never been there i cannot mm. and i went there it was amazing a- absolutely outstanding yeah you know what 10 out of a 10 yeah. the, the 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 people working there yesterday uh they're so nice. They were they were prompt. The food was outstanding. Good seasoning. Yes. Fresh. Fresh. Yeah, because there's nothing there's nothing worse than having a, like the snow crab, and having like bend and you can't yeah. even snap oh, it. Yeah. No. They no. They were yeah. crackling. Mm-hmm. It was, you know, and, it, and the I really like the atmosphere mm-hmm. because you know you're not sitting down you know sitting down you know trying to eat proper <laughs> you know that's not me you know it's not it was like i you know you go in there it's got the high table it's really clean right. you know it's almost it, it's really neat so i went in there first time i'll go back yeah. i love it there um, well it, well it sounds it sounds like we're uh we got we got to try it out together oh it's somebody somebody chimed in it looks like they're the the other uh locations in viera oh okay that somebody somebody else put it yeah viera yeah that that's yeah. rosemary agueda is a casino coming to the area Oh, okay. Is a casino coming into the area? That well, and we'll take a couple more questions if anybody. Yeah, we'll has. take. Yeah, we'll take. They didn't pop up for me. I, I don't have those yet. You know, I got. Uh, oh, I don't. I don't see that question. What's the question? Is a casino coming is a there? Com- a casino coming. Uh, that's a great question, and, yeah. and and I, not that I know of. Um, and, and and let me kind of explain that a little bit. There was rumors that there was a Hard Rock coming out to mm-hmm. ninety five. Um, you know, here's what gets me. I know the Seminoles signed that deal with the state, and they were giving them a million and a half dollars a day. And I would look from a business standpoint, and I would mm-hmm. say they would not give the state that much money if they didn't plan on expanding or whatever or get exclusive rights. Mm-hmm. That's just a lot of money, million and a half dollars a day, and it's, and it's, it's just crazy, $500 million or something a year. Um, so to me, in my mind, that – that mm-hmm. told me there's got to be a casino. Right. Um, I heard Renekers went for sale. I think it sold. I mean, you're, you're a realtor guy. You know, I think it did go to sale. Mm-hmm. But here's the deal. Uh, that's in the county, and they, in order for them to get water and sewer, it would have to be annexed into the city of Melbourne. Mm-hmm. And I would likely be the first to know because I know a lot of projects I can't speak about, mm. and they have not contacted me. I, I mean, I haven't heard anything yet. Right. Um, does that mean it's not coming? That's not what I'm saying. Right. What I'm saying is it hasn't evolved yet. It's just weird that, you know, they're giving all that money to Seminoles, they're giving all that money to the state of Florida, a million and a half dollars a day. A de- every day, a million, you can give me a million and a half dollars a day. No kidding. That's crazy, you know. <laughs> but, uh, it, it, you know, is it coming? I if if it is I don't know it yet, mm-hmm. you know I, I don't know I I also look at it as that area is growing I mean if you would if I were to put it somewhere I would target the Space Coast I mean you have one in Tampa you have one in Hollywood yeah you know why wouldn't you why wouldn't you yeah well the, the again we've had this discussion before the you know in order for that kind of gaming to exist it really needs to be on seminal land so yes. unless the state of florida is also going to just gift the property right to to, to the 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 Seminole tribe of florida so they can have that style of gaming right. 
because that would have to happen as well. And right, and so yeah, so you have other you have other the, um, yeah the near the nearest um, the nearest uh, uh, what they call it, reservation is Fort Pierce. Yeah, and so unless they do get you know land up here, which you know I mean uh, I welcome the tribe. You know I've worked with the Seminoles. They're they're a great tribe. They're they give back. Um, I would have no problem you know seeing you know gaming here but you know i'm not sure if it's everybody's cup of tea but right. it certainly will bring you know some money and if you look at what they did with hollywood with the big guitar and you know oh, that's crazy and it's they got beautiful. you know the concerts they got beautiful venues so i mean yeah it does have gaming but they also have the pools they have the amenities they have a beautiful hotel they have and um, they have something that people always mm -hmm. ask me about we need a bigger convention center i right. hear that all the time well we want big events well Maybe if they were to come, maybe that's that's something they'd have mm -hmm. a big enough convention center or something because right. they do have concerts. There. Well, I mean, maybe maybe that's just like prerequisite. You know, if you guys want to build, you know, you, you also have to have a hundred square feet of uh, you know meeting space, hundred thousand square feet. Yeah, hundred you know, hundred square feet, not big. No, no. Uh, but <clears throat> yeah, if, if you that's have your a, apartment, if you have a hundred k, no, that's anybody's bathroom. Ow. Um, <laughs> So 100K of, of meeting space would be a game changer. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, we really don't have that am amount here. And not that we would replace, you know, uh, Orlando and uh, and I drive, but we would at least be able to hold some really cool, you know, things. You know, maybe, uh, you know, a smaller Surf Expo, maybe a smaller Comic-Con, maybe, you know, smaller uh, concerts and, and such. So, yeah, I mean, if, if we could you know kind of wheel and deal with the tribe yeah i think that'd be great so so that hopefully that answers it um you know i at this time not yet but you know that's not i can't say no i mean because you know you never know i may get the phone call and they may say hey we got you know we need water and sewer so what other questions we have mine's not loading for questions Do um it. chris griff griff i apologize if i mispronounce what's going on <laughs> at, the, at the bredesen on the beach i heard it sold is that is that Melbourne property? Is that Melbourne Beach? Yeah. Right yeah. Okay. Yeah. The um, well, I I just basically I know there's hope. It's I know they're doing some updates to hotels. They're putting the new one there, but they're doing some updates on the hotels. You know, there as you see a lot of people coming in, people are are investing in and in, you know remodeling these hotels. So mm -hmm. you know they're kind of making it. You know, really they they expect the next couple of years of tourism to cr to increase. Oh, well, for sure. I mean, we got the new project right by Crown Plaza going up and not too far uh, down down there uh, towards uh, Ichabods and Bunkies and that whole plaza. Well, the Lacuna Beach, that, that's a go. Yeah. Well, I mean, Lacuna, we're, uh, yeah, we're, I mean, we're, we're excited about that. But that's, you know, but we're, I mean, just the properties on uh, the beach side, Cocoa Beach, you know, they're seeing that Weston come in. International yeah. Palms is getting leveled. Right. So, you know, things are happening all over, you know, the, the coastline. So, uh, yeah, keep your eyes and ears open. You know, if we hear it first, we'll let you know. Yeah, that that any what any other questions that we have? Not that I see. Not that I see. It looks like we've uh, kind of gone gone through the motions, and now uh, maybe uh, just remind people what's going on, um, how they can listen, remind them to share, and uh, and thank them for tuning in. Yeah, well, and listen, I, I appreciate everybody. Um, actually, I finally did finally did load. Uh, Let's see. Yeah, you, there's. Uh, yeah, appreciate everybody. Tell I don't know. Tell Melbourne Police to stop issuing citations for fender benders. You know, you know. Uh, I don't. You know what? Uh, you know, I I've, I was a police officer for many years, and at the end of the day, you know what? People people need to get off their phones. They need to focus on driving. No kidding. You know it. it you know it, it just. You know, the, one of the top complaints I hear is mayor is speeding and. You know, look, at the end of the day, we all got to remember that you get in that car, um, you know, that that's uh, got to be responsible. So you're getting a ticket for a reason. Mm -hmm. OK, so nobody likes to get a ticket, you know, and, and it is what it is. So but uh, yeah, they, that looks like about all the other questions that we have. Any last ones? Um, no, but definitely remind everybody to uh, take aim. Okay, here's one. Uh, okay. Chris uh, Chris asked again, are the roads in consideration for the influx? Um, actually, uh, last Tuesday night at our council meeting, we discussed some of the TPO uh, priorities and some of the expansion of the streets. Um, you know, the, 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 uh, the one thing about here, you know, we'll never grow up to like uh, Fort Lauderdale, et cetera. We'll never be like that. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons is, is we don't allow 
certain building of heights. You know, you can only go so high, uh, so many feet. Uh, mm-hmm. 80, I think it's 80, 86 something feet or something. So uh, you'll never see that. And I tell people, people like, oh, why we're getting another hotel? Nothing will be built bigger than the 20, uh, Trinity Towers or the other one by the old galley. Um, mm-hmm. Nothing be bigger than that. You know, are we getting more people on the roads? Unfortunately, yes. Right. Um, but yeah, we're, we're expanding the roads. You see a lot of construction going on. What we're really focused on too is bike safety. If you look at downtown Old Galley, they're, they're doing all that because we need better crosswalks. Uh, we need better bike safety. Hey, you know and, better than anybody. And pedestrian. Pedestrian, pedestrian safety. and cycling safety. Yeah, yeah. We, need, we need safety. So we're, you know, when you come into office and everything was built from the 50s and 60s and you know, and and you're we're trying, and and mm. you know we're working hard, and and uh, but I will tell you, you know, go up to some other these other places, Orlando, I four and stuff. We'll never be like that, and you know we're doing a lot of things behind the scenes. I don't talk about mm. one of the things like we talked about the other day is it ITS, where when you go down US one, all the traffic lights need to be in sync. See that that's a big factor too. They hadn't right. been done for years. We're doing that now. Where you know you go and you get stopped by every freaking light. You know, <laughs> right. if you can get where you're going, you know, um, that's half the battle. Right. I mean, stopping at every light's gonna, you know, it'll make you feel traffic's terrible. But it also, you know, when when you when you do synchronize lights like that, mm-hmm. it only works if you're going to speed limit. Yeah. If you're racing ahead. You're gonna catch that the last bit of that red light ahead of you. Yeah. But if you go to speed limit, it'll turn green because that's how you know it's measured. It's not measured for you know 45 to 65. You yeah. know, it's, it's measured at a certain speed. So you go to a certain speed, a certain distance, and the light will respond and accordingly. You know. Yeah. So it it only works if you if if the people work it. You know, Indigo Sky schools are not like we grew up anymore, and that worries me. Well, you know, I I will agree with you. Yeah. I mean, I grew up here. I went to I went to Sherwood. I went to Johnson. And I graduated O'Galley, um, and and I agree with you. It's definitely different. You know, we don't have any any say so in the schools at the school board, um, but hopefully we'll get back to uh, you know where where there's more responsibility and stuff, and you know teachers are empowered more because um, there's no way. I'd get fired the first day. There's no damn <laughs> no way kidding. if a kid smarted off to me, yeah. you know, and I'd, t- I'd call their parents and say, you deal with them. If not, I'm going to deal with you. Yeah. I mean, that they're just that's unacceptable, and I agree with you because there's got to be some – kids can't just, you know, they, they well, can't – they the, can't. we can't do that. The lack of discipline, the curriculum that doesn't really make sense, it doesn't prepare kids to go on to further education or into the uh, career field. Yeah. And there's so much opportunity because I remember we had what they call OJT. Mm-hmm. You know, by the time you're a junior, yep. senior, your, your last two um, uh, periods are to go and work and put in time, almost like an internship, at a, uh, you know, whether you're a mechanic or a travel agency, you, you picked, you know, you go work with your parents as long as you're, you know, that on-job training uh, w- was valid and you could prove that you've been there and, and, and it was successful because people, you know, not everybody is a college bound kind of person. You know, some people just want to, you know, right. get the skills to, to, to do what, you know, the family business is. You, you know, when, when I went to O'Galley, I took three years of auto mechanics and, and you know what I would say now, if you were to ask me what's the best courses that I took it was it, it was that mm-hmm. I didn't become an auto mechanic mm-hmm. but that got my mind ready to um, you know to when I got out of high school and I ended up going to the Bavard electrical apprentice program for a little while but I learned that I can build anything I'm a contractor now a home inspector I got many licenses but I, I look at something and from even the mechanical standpoint cars are different I really can't work on them now because now you plug something in and it tells you you know <laughs> okay. but if I see a, like a 72 Chevelle oh I can make that thing no, you know <laughs> hook up nitrous oxide to that thing you know get a ticket on US1 right well but, that, that was when it was just a manifold and a carburetor yeah, and ex- you know exactly. and things were easy you yeah. Now you need special tools and diagnostic equipment. You know, it, it, it has really taken the, but I think that's by design. Yeah. You know, ca- car, automobile companies want you to go back to the dealership for every little, you know, every little uh, service and, and instead of, you know, people doing it themselves. So, um, you know, some of those things are by design. But, you know, we're in an aerospace community and, you know, it's healthy for kids to maybe get the get those skill right. sets like you know working on uh, airplanes and jet engines and, and other things because they're surrounded by it here well you know like O'Galley high school someone says go commodores i'm gonna say go commodores love you know like I said I, i'm actually as we know we've looked into it i'm the first O'Galley graduate mayor 
city, for the city of Melbourne. So that's, that's pretty awesome. cool. Pretty cool. So very proud of that. I never thought I'd be mayor, but you know, I love. Yeah. Look, I love. Uh, you know, I love Mel. I love the Bulldogs. You know, mm-hmm. when they tried to change the name of the Melbourne Bulldogs, I fought that one. I wanted yeah. Melbourne to be Melbourne. I always tell the Palm Bay mayor, hey, the Palm Bay High School is amazing because it's in the city of Palm, or city of Melbourne, not mm-hmm. Palm Bay. <laughs> I rallied him on that. It's all good. All good fun. That's but hilarious. you know, we have MCC, Holy Trinity. But um, you know, O'Galley, if you go in there mm-hmm. now, you see what they're doing with the the you know the airplanes uh, my daughter's in the program for yeah. for you know to to the uh, aviation program so i guess all the kids that get out of there they get like good jobs at like 35 40 grand a year high paying jobs uh, high, you know so and and jobs that are in demand yeah and we we have they're actually getting ready to start building at the airport the dassault falcon uh campus so we'll be building those jets here for for yeah for, the french company yeah the french company and we'll, they, they need local you know talent they need people with those skill sets yeah and and, you know we we so we got a lot of amazing organizations going here right um and like so we we're working on it for you know to be almost like the the semiconductor you know building place of of the east coast so melbourne like to see all everybody have to get good jobs and you know live live you know prosper here because yeah growing up here um you know I, i don't tell a lot of people my dad worked for gdc back when when they when they went bankrupt in Palm Bay and mm-hmm. he was a roofer there and you know I remember when you know nobody had jobs and in his house he bought it in Sherwood Park you know interest rates was like 16 percent on a house and you know it was just I remember as a kid those days of the struggles and the the church the church on Post Road would bring us food because you know my, my family didn't have food so mm-hmm. I remember those days and, and and there's no way I want my kids or you know anybody's kids or their families to live like that right. you know and you know I want the opportunities to be here now you have to go out there and work and get the opportunity but it's got to be available to you and that's right. what's very important to me as mayor 100 percent so but lovely but anyway that's all good I see Rick Tracy uh venerable there hey Rick it, how you doing man he actually moved back here he, you know, he moved away and he got smart and he moved back. I'm glad to see, <laughs> glad to see him come back. Miss him, good, good man. But uh, the street lights need some attention. Many lights not working. Uh, could be ours. Could be FPL. It could be, it could be county. You just if you'll send me where it's at, I'll I'll make sure our staff gets on that. Find out. Um, you know. Um, oh, here's one. The reason is because supervisors require it for a ticket. That is that. I don't think that's accurate. I don't think that actually. I don't think that's lawful. You know, you mm. can't require an officer. They're, they're, um, I do know from being licensed in insurance. Um, a lot of the insurance companies, they will find like a subrogation fault where they'll say, you know, nobody got a ticket, so we're gonna make you at fault, and people will raise hell. Mm. They'd be like, he hit me. It was minor fender bender, but my insurance company say I'm at, I'm at fault. They'll say that all the time, and they'll demand that hey, I wasn't at fault. And really, the insurance industry wants a ticket written, you know, for two reasons. One, find fault. Two, is probably to raise your premium. No kidding. <laughs> yeah, that's no, that's not a big surprise. Look, right. I don't, I don't hide nothing here. You know what? You know, if you don't like it, you know, you can always tune out, right? <laughs> right. right. So, uh, well, I don't think it's lawful either. But that's what he said to me when I called him on the phone. So, um, I, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. It's very interesting. Um, that's something maybe you can uh, actually you know what I worked there I retired out of there you can always ask for the SOP that says he's got to write a ticket because it would be in writing and, and I'm sure you know it, it's uh, you know that that it's got to be in writing or if it, it didn't it, it didn't happen mm-hmm. right but I don't really see any more questions uh, appreciate everybody tuning in um, next week we'll be doing again uh, my my fundraiser there take aim with the mayor um basically you get to shoot against me if you can beat me which you probably can't um you get a nice <laughs> coin <laughs> you'll get a nice coin a hey, challenge of, coin uh, yeah you get a, like a challenge coin oh, then we'll have fun. dinner afterwards it's really nice and all the money goes into uh a great organization that helps uh women that's been trafficking uh if you look it, it's it's uh and just, you don't you don't have to shoot you just get a, a yeah, raffle you come, yeah too. you get a raffle you can come to dinner just to dinner you don't have to yeah. shoot you know, and you can come and we'll have dinner. And again, you, a lot of cool gifts. Yeah, a lot of cool gifts. And again, it 100 percent goes to uh, yeah, uh, to Life Recaptured, a great organization that, you know, they 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 you know, I've talked to some of the girls that are the ladies and, and, and that they helped out that were, 
you know, traffic and, and, and it's, it's, it's amazing what this organization does and gets, gets these ladies a, a chance to live again. They take in their animals and, you know, best they can. And they, they get them, you know, give them back, help them get their self-esteem, uh, and get them back in the, you know, get, get their life back. And, and so I'm, you know, I'm a proud supporter of that. And, uh, see, a lot of people don't know, I, I'm a pretty good shot. I'm, I'm, uh, uh, when I was stationed in the Coast Guard in Station Miami Beach, we worked at the the whole weekend the weekend duty, and we had a gun range. And when it wasn't busy, we'd sh- I probably shot a million rounds through a Beretta. So look, I, oh nine millimeter Beretta. Yep. Yeah, man. Yep. I mean, old school. But you know what? We'll see. We'll see, and we'll we'll see for bragging rights. <laughs> you know what? If you can out shoot me, that's fine. You know, I. I uh, Again, you know, you can you can claim the title and you probably win some nice gifts and and uh, you know and it's and, for a good cause and it's for it's for a good yeah. great you know it's for a great cause yeah. and I appreciate John Casey out there everything he's doing for Life Recaptured I know he works his tail off in the community he works it for 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 uh, Life Recaptured so I appreciate that so um, all right well I guess what we'll call tonight yeah. um, and I want to congratulate all the high school seniors that graduated class of uh, 23 class of 23 you know what L- life is easy now it's going to be so easy <laughs> now that you're out of high school can we have some sound you know you know i i i, I, I do have this uh um, can we can we, do we got a sound or something we can <laughs> oh that's terrible a baby crying <laughs> you gonna oh you just lost me like 12 votes jesse wow <laughs> No, <laughs> and if we don't have fun, you know, what the hell, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, but anyway, thanks everyone for tuning in, and we'll catch you in two weeks, actually. Next week, come out to Frogbone Shooting Center, then, you know, come and, and join us for dinner, and, and uh, you can uh, get tickets at Eventbrite and shoot a little bit if you want, and uh, support uh, Life Recaptured, and then we'll, we'll take it up after that. Uh, again, thank you, and, and uh, Jesse, and... Yeah, you know, man. Space Coast Podcast for, for you know, you you and uh, everyone else. I appreciate it. Until next time, guys, have a beautiful night and a safe Memorial Day weekend. Yeah, happy Memorial Day.